that. Okay, let's get the game going. Alright everybody, welcome to Battle Arena. This is game two tonight. Battle Arena, for those that don't know, is an event held by the Trinity Force podcast community where anybody, bronze and gold, can join into a game, have it streamed, and have uh, plat and diamond players comment on it, and maybe give some advice, maybe help you out, and have a whole bunch of fun. So tune in, sit back. If you want to get in the games, you can go to the sign-up sheet, which is at trinityforcenetwork.com. Uh, you can hang around and chat and talk with us and hopefully get in that way. And you can also visit the subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash tforcenetwork. And yeah, that's basically it. All right, and um, if this is exciting for you, this is coaching essentially for 10 people and helping you review and spectate your gameplay if the one-on-one -on -one coaching is more of your thing um head over to this website i have up on stream that tico just mentioned trinityforcenetwork.com um we talked about the battle arena button um talked about the reddit network if you didn't catch tico saying the link there's a link to it and teamspeak right here um also as far as coaching is concerned check out the patreon tier rewards not going to plug them too hard because i'm not a sellout but um there is some coaching stuff on here so you can request anybody network too so if you want tuco if you want me if you want chira um if you want pwn to review frozen mallet gangplank game why would you want pwn go ahead review. yeah he, he might as well be satan he would yeah. just yell at you the entire time You're <laughs> why are you doing you this bad. why are you doing that yeah <laughs> Wait, I was trying so hard. <laughs> Have fun, guys. I hope everyone learns something in game one and applies it to game two. Alright, well. <laughs> um, pretty standard bans. Hopefully they ban out um, his Rengar. I would like to not see him play Rengar again, but if he wants to play it, I'm sure I can give him plenty of feedback on it, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, we'll just be a little bit more harsh with our criticism, I guess. That's the biggest thing I see between, like, Rengar play, regardless of how you play him, damage, tank, bruiser. Um, between elos is, one, counter ganking, and two, bola usage. His bola usage really didn't impress me, but we talked about it after the game, so. Some people need tough love, of course. Uh, I'm a gentle lover, Andrew Lowell 230. If you want tough love, go to Pwn. LeBlanc fan, I'm not a big fan. I, I actually played LeBlanc today because it was a good matchup and I still like LeBlanc. I don't think she's that bad, but I think you need to be good at LeBlanc to make it work. But uh, Bans are pretty standard. I don't think bans matter that much unless you're like an LCS player, so it's kind of whatever. We'll see what people have to play. Can't wait to stop here. And um, for anybody, well, we have some downtime. I pulled up. If you head over to Reddit slash T Force Network, there is a post about the tournament. Ooh, that's not the Reddit I wanted to go to. Reddit slash Trinity Force. It's banned. I'm not allowed in there. <laughs> have you guys ever tried to go there? To where? Reddit slash Trinity Force, it just says this is a banned subreddit. You're not allowed in. Nope. It's a scary place. Alright, huh. so you have the Trinity Force 5v5 tournament. It recently got sponsored, so there's all the VODs here. And um, the winning team gets $10 on RP and Triumphant uh -oh. Rise. Whoa! A skin that I personally have and a skin that I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, hopefully I get to see some other people with it soon. And... The um, winning team also gets to play the network team in a best of three afterwards. Well, that's not exciting. They would just stomp. Like, the network team would lose. Yeah. So if see, you, uh... you see, you, you're talking shit, but I'm on that team, you assholes. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm playing mid for that team. 
Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys ever so, want to play mid against me, um, win the tournament. Yeah, I was about to say, if you have some deep-seated rage against either horse or I, you should be pushing for if that I, T Force tournament win so you can play if us. If I make it to it, I will try so hard, it won't even be funny. <laughs> whale. I quit Reddit until Whale. <laughs> X Bow Bow burns in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Here we'd get dumpstered. Yeah. We won't. You guys don't have enough bands to deal with my champion pool. <laughs> I'll probably just play TF if you don't ban it, but whatever. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> but right. hey, I probably won't make it, so. so. Or who's actually playing right now, his team uh, might have the best chance to win, so. Pretty normal picks. We have the mid lane matchups, so. It might change a little bit with jungle matchup because mid lane is dependent on jungle picks, especially the higher and higher you get in ELO. But Victor, Cassiopeia, um, Victor really wants to hit lasers early in lane. Cassiopeia really needs to use um, input buffering to make sure that she's clicking backwards after every Q so she doesn't tank lasers. But it's, it's a tricky matchup where Cassiopeia wants to hit Qs and hit CS and use spells. And Victor's kind of using the Dota drill that I talked about in my CS video to look for opportunities to E her. But Cassiopeia's animations are fast enough that she can kind of use buffering to dodge sometimes. So it's a really... And Cassiopeia can like pretend to auto attack and then dodge because the animation's not long enough. And it's, it's, a, it's a skill matchup. But it's one that I'll be interested to see. Eternal X Drifter. My team got his first eliminated. <laughs> um. Mm. Victor should win the lane, though. All things considered. Yeah? Probably. They're both easy to gank, though. Which is why I kind of wanted to wait jungle matchups to talk about it more. Yeah. Should I use Dark Crystal or Professor? Um, get the Uncle Sam one. You can buy skins and select, so you should use these period where your teammates are picking to um, buy that skin support. <laughs> Uncle Rise and the Statue of Carthus. God bless America. It's almost 4th of July. Oh, Spork is Canadian. Whoops. Oh. Fucking <laughs> okay, that American. Yeah, I just remembered Spork stream delay, my bad. So Rengar again, um, I wonder if Arrow's playing it or if this guy's playing it. I think we might get to see a drastically different Rengar if it's Metamorphosis. Uh, crack Salad. I've seen this Corky once in the very first battle arena that I casted in January. It was very good and he carried. But um, it's been like six months, so let's see. Kale pick. I like Kale a lot. I think she's a strong champion, so we'll see how she does. Do, do, do. Lucian, we'll see if he picks Lucian. Some poutine. Poutine's disgusting. <laughs> the best. I don't know, I haven't seen Kale played in a while, to tell the truth. I haven't seen Rise since his nerf or buff, and I haven't played him. I too. haven't. Yeah. I haven't seen Kale in a while, but I I want to play her with stupid Rune Glaive just to do it. <laughs> I think so, I played it once on my Smurf for a warm up game. I think Devourer is still better. I wouldn't be surprised. Have you uh, Have you fucked around with Rune Glaive at all? Yeah, I've put it on at least some. It's, I like it better first item, but if you think about it at two items, yeah. Runeglaive plus Morello's is the same thing as Magus plus Lichbane, but it's worse. Yeah, I uh, I like Runeglaive early for the upfront burst and like ganks and whatnot, and mm -hmm. the ability to wave clear with it's pretty cool if you can get a kill or your laner dies and you can shove the turret, but... Other than the first initial ganks, I don't really like it anymore. Yeah, I'm not in love with it. It doesn't scale that hard. And I can't buy Lich Brain on those champions now. Exactly. Alright, so, um, champion I mean, select. 
Oh. The nice thing, if anything, though, it, it does kind of allow you to split push a little bit, but I don't think that that makes up for, mm -hmm. like, the power loss or uh, an equivalent, like, st strength item to Center Hulk or where. I haven't seen split pushing a jump in a long time in my game. Uh, yeah. It's, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it's a great strategy, so I don't do it or see it, but... Um, jungle matchup, Rek'Sai versus Rengar. It's a pretty bad matchup for Rengar. Rengar can come back if Rek'Sai doesn't shut Rengar down too hard, but Rek'Sai can be really imposing. And Rengar wants to counter gank, but also gets struggle struggles if he gets counter ganked, and Rek'Sai can tunnel out Rengar pretty hard. But it's not a great... I've played the matchup both sides a couple of times, actually, and I'm not a fan of it for Rengar. Top... I actually play quite a bit of both of these champions. I haven't played Ryze since he got changed around. Um, I don't know how he works with that being a spam W, so we'll see on that. Kale top. It depends if he runs a attack speed or a magic page. Um, if he runs an attack speed page, this is a pretty good matchup for him. If he doesn't have attack speed reds and AP quints like a normal Kale page, this is a hard matchup for Kale. But it's I don't know if he has the right rune page, it should be an easy matchup. And playing KO without the right rune page is actually pretty hard. She's it's miserable. One of those weird champions where you just have to have specific rune pages for them, like mid virus. But um, bot lane, Lucian, Leona, Tris, Thresh. I play a little bit of Lucian and Tris, but I don't play Thresh or Leona. But Lucian, I don't know. It it comes down to the skill level of the Thresh. If the Thresh mismanages, mis mismanages trades, it can be really bad lane. If the Thresh trades well, Tristana does really well on extended trades. And like when Thresh counter engages Leona, it turns into an extended trade, so it goes into Trist's favor. So it, like most Thresh lanes, it comes down to the skill of the Thresh. But. I have mixed pen and attack speed quints, I think. That's not a bad page. Um, it's not what I run, but it's, it's as long as you use some attack speed in there, it helps. Kale do people just, still do CDR per level on Kale? Or is that only if you're going to build Nashers? And... You can. There are two builds. You can go yeah. CDR level, and you can go Nashers, and that'll give you enough with Masteries. Or you can go regular Blues, and you can go CDR Boots. But Kale wants the 30%. When they toned her down, they toned her ult cooldown down a bit. And um, she kind of wants that to be at a reasonable point. And just be able to spam W and have E always up. Kale benefits from CDR a lot. So you want to be going with one of those two builds. Pineapple, keep <laughs> someone ban me from chat. Keep the moon runes out of chat. So Victor's that running... Moon speak. Yeah. Magic pen reds, armor or magic resist blues, armor yellows, and ability power quints. That's pretty basic blind matchup type of setup, I guess. It's not bad, but if you don't have a lot of runes, that's fine. If you want yeah. to have an AP specific page, HP mm -hmm. per level yellows, and I honestly don't see a lot of people running magic resist now. So it's CDR scaling, scaling CDR, scaling AP are both good. But if you're not like a mid lane main. Um, MR isn't bad. Yeah. HP level is a really good rune. I don't run armor on most of my junglers now. I run HP per level or armor level. Just like flat runes are kind of wonky. Unless they're an early game jungle. Early game jungle, I still run armor. It's easy to sit back and scale. <laughs> it's hard to do anything in the jungle early levels unless you play like Nidalee, <laughs> but Nidalee is nice. What, what is this typing going on? <laughs> I like Trist though. I've been singing Trist's praises for a bit. I think she's strong right now. I think cleaning up the E animation late game and just kind of a few tweaks have helped her quite a bit. And the Q buff. A mm -hmm. patch or two ago. Hey, she's just like 
She can one hey. v one people and hyper carry. Christ Pretty the nice. effort was wondering how Trundle Nasus lane is supposed to work out for Trundle. It's supposed to work out say. pretty well for Trundle, considering that you're getting a shitload of health regen back, and Nasus is notoriously weak early, so you can go pretty aggressive in the early. And if he tries to fight you, you're taking damage away from him with your Q and just pumping it back into his face. So I'd say go aggro early, just be aware of the minion wave, and keep him on the back foot. If you can get a slight advantage early and transfer that into other things, you basically don't have anything to worry about because you can almost negate what his ult does with your ult. Mm -hmm. yeah, the two the key things for the general lane is one, you, as Chia talked about, you want to do well against Nasus early. Two, Nasus can't cancel TP, so you'll always have TP advantage on Nasus. Because, Especially when you can knock him up with the pillar. Yeah, you can pillar him out, but he can't do anything to your TP. So that's another advantage for Trundle. Late game, Trundle does really well against Nasus too, because if Nasus tries to do anything, he's a terrible bruiser that gets kited. And you just like <laughs> press E, and Nasus can't touch anybody, and then you press R, and Nasus dies. That's the beautiful thing about pillar, because you can block... like m Most Nasuses are taking Ghost, for the most part, especially in lower elo. Uh, so, like, it's one of those things where if he starts making a beeline towards a squishy target as well, you can just kind of block off his path a little bit, because he's not going to get around it very quickly. Trump that pillar in... really ruins him quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, and don't push more than you need to against Nasus. You just want to freeze the wave. Anytime he comes up, you should be yep. autoing, um, auto-resetting with Q and autoing again. And auto-attacking him until he leaves wave. Yeah, if you can freeze and zone him, that that's one of the best ways to deal with him. And it pushes him back so much farther anyway, because he can't farm his Q or get any gold to roll into the mega tank. And one of the reasons freezing his Nasus is really good is usually um, one of the ways you beat freeze is something I talk about and I've talked about in Battery called you break a freeze. When Nasus breaks a freeze, he has to E the wave. Loses a lot of mana, um, has to use E on the creep wave, and pushes the wave into tower, and it makes him really hard to stack Q for a really long time. Ignatius is so hard to break freeze on. It's uh, very hard to come back on Nasus once they start freezing on you. Yep. I prefer blue teens comp. Why, Herox? Please elaborate. Probably oh, because they have a little bit more early much. game pressure. Blue team. I think blue team just scales hard. I think Kaon cast CP on monsters late game. And Leona's pretty good mid. I don't know. Red team just needs to have a good early mid game. They have Victor Rengar. And if Silence quick on the Kale ults too, it throws a wrench in some of Rengar's assassinate potential. Mm hmm. Rengar is going to die. He can't take This is not good. Well, at least he's not going to die. Um, I didn't see what happened there, but Rengar shouldn't die to second buff like that. So He's not running HP level either. Interesting. Generally on this side though, the route you want to go for on Rengar, and I'll have a jungle roots video out on Friday for anybody interested. You should be doing white, wolves, wraith, blue. He's if running... If you're really scared of getting triple buffed, there are some red roots, but that's generally the one you want to go for. He's running armor pin reds, attack speed blues, a mix of armor and attack damage yellows, and a mix of attack damage and armor pin quints, so See, it's kind of... Funny. I mean, I don't like the page, but... He shouldn't be dying to It should be page. able to, yeah, clear it all right. He's got enough stats to kill the camps. I run full armor pen and HP per level, and I can do that camp. <laughs> Victor. And Victor just really wants to land ease here. It's pretty important. All these Kale pots early are just not making Rise have a good time. Mm -hmm. Nice. Movement there by Leona bot lane. Don had to blow heal early to save Thresh. And Thresh is flash. Oh wait, he didn't flash. Okay. Thresh went coin. Um, 
Whoa, how low did he get? If you want to be really greedy, coin is okay. Can't afford to be greedy against the Lucian lane. Especially at Lucian Leona, because Leona's uh, level 2 potentially, you want the effective health. It's really, you should have, um, whatchamacallit, the runic item. Relic shield, relic shield, not runic. But you can kind of see, um, that's just suffering from health and lack of regen in this lane. And positionally getting queued. If you start a flask item like Silent did, and you notice them blow a teleport like this, what you want to do is chug the rest of your pots. Um, he doesn't have any, but if he did, he would want to, and just shove lane back into tower and walk back. Um, this gives you TP advantage, and you have flask advantage. That's pretty good. But he's not going to get wave in, so I think he should just get Whoa. cannon and B. No, he should just be now. Rex I about to gank mid here. Apparently his Already rune page blue is Victor's awful. flash. Um, Rex in chat. I don't like his rune page, but it's enough to kill camps. But the the safer route's generally better, and I did mention that if that's something he doesn't want to do in the future. That's good. Dash and Chest were losing, but as I mentioned in Champion Select, um the lane comes down to how well Dush plays, and Dush played the trade pretty well, so they're in a good spot. You can kind of see how Tristana does excel in this extended trade. She just got her E and Aleutian, got some autos, and chilled, and let it explode. I don't know. Yeah, Rengar is behind, but um, he just wants to farm. He can come back. He should have let Red get a little lower there, just to get more effective health from the heal. But no huge errors, so it's not the big, not a big deal. Good pink ward by Rexa. Cassio got tier. That's pretty standard. Most Cassios go tier into a bit uh, abyssal right now. Just, just flashed. Fiona. Ooh, nice flash from Thrash. Mm-hmm. Where was Lucian there for that kink? I have no idea. I think that would have been a he was farming. Finger was faster. He could have killed Thrash, but Rex has. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if fucking if Lucian's W had just tickled Thrash, he would have imploded. <laughs> and same thing with Kale. Um, you have a flask item. If you get the other person like this, use your mana, shove into tower, and recall. That's kind of how you abuse flask top lane. Oh um, man. Uh, RP. Good FP. And out of Rek'Sai. Um, you really kind of want to look at the lanes and see what's gankable and what isn't. I understand top has been pushed a lot, but Kale and Rengar are both low, and even if you don't think you can... Kale and Rise are both low. Even if you don't think you can gank Rise, sometimes you just sit around in that lane and wait for the counter gank, and you could have either caught Rengar there or done something. Triss Thresh is also really hard to gank. You have to deal with Lantern and Triss W, and it's it's rough. I would like wait for Leona to hit six before I touch that lane. I think the only reason Dash got close is because of misplay. Ring with the Mobis here though. Um catching up some, but he's not buying any combat stats, so he's actually still kind of in a rough spot. I don't like this buy, and I don't like Cinder Hulk and Rengar a ton. We'll see. Cinder Hulk Rengar isn't the worst. And he has enough damage stats on his team, it's actually yeah, I like that he's going tanky, never mind. Good build. He needs to do something mid game though. Rengar falls off late game compared to most tanks, so hopefully he looks to pressure the map. I heard Chick 2G's bronze, he's gonna handle second. I was glad I did not get Trick in any more promotion series this season. I hate Trick. Alright.
and Rex says Jordan. Blue. This is the rule I talk about when I talk about jungling and how to ward out the other jungle quite a bit. Um, two, two, three, seven, nine. Um, you'll see that rule applies again. Rex eyes at his second buff, the second time at around nine minutes. Pretty predictable. That was extremely forced bot. Yeah, it was. I think I should be following six. It's nine thirty. But Rise is already TP'd, so they may just want to start dragging. They have to drag. Blue's potentially getting top for this. They should get top for this. They should even be able to pick up a kill on Rengar potentially. Yeah, they could yeah. easily get this. That's good. They finished. If Did uh, Ryze teleport down for that? Yes. Yeah. Alright. Uh, Ryze teleported, Rengar didn't have flash. I really think that if Cass had come down there, they probably could have picked up the easy double on drag. Yeah. The only issue they'd have to deal with is a uh, potential mid coming down and Victor ulting, but even still, I if bottom, uh, if AD carry and support for blue side came up, that was probably like dragon and guaranteed two kills. And someone in chat, Trist is doing good on CS, even though Leon and Leon have been pressuring. Um, that is one of the bigger differences, especially you watch LCS and losing lane. You really shouldn't lose in CS and losing lanes that hard. Um, a lot of it comes down to wave management. You want to make sure that you're not letting them freeze on you, and you know when to break freeze, and you know when to freeze in front of your tower. But, um, Losing lanes, you don't lose that bad in League of Legends. Unless it's like Garen against Akali or something. It's not Dota, and like, you should be able to keep, like, even CS or close in most losing lanes. As long as you don't, like, burn out wave and you have decent wave management. You want to see a real losing lane? Go into Steam and download Dota 2. Oh. Ooh. Alright. So Rengar, a lot of mistakes here. One, you want to be ulting with five combo points. Two, you got your five combo points right here, kind of where I'm hovering my mouse. Sorry for the other commentators. But um, <laughs> you use it for a fifth Q. If you would have used it for a five point E, almost as much damage, CCs them long enough for Whoa. to do damage. So Same thing as the Rengar from last game. Um, Bola usage. You use your five point Bola. This isn't 2013 Rengar. 5 point Q is usually not as good. 5 point Bull is almost as much damage, too. <laughs> good gank pop, though. Kale's struggling in CS, too. Kale CS can be difficult. Her auto attack animation is kind of weird, and um. Well, she's she's picked both those fights where she is. He almost died the first time, and the second one it cost her life. A, but... a big issue though has been the fact that sh he'll go aggressive on Kale and then sit in the enemy minion wave and eat like a quarter of his health and mm -hmm. just passive minion damage while Rise is running away. Yeah. And Kale, if you're struggling CS on Kale, um, one of the things I do, and I see, I think the T Force game I watched, the Aspirin guy did this as well. Um, just auto attack casters. Nothing else is hitting them. You can't miss them with your E, and then use the rest of your E to make sure you don't miss the melees. But it's a lot more manageable. Just you should have just W in and killed them. But that is one of the things that took me a couple of games to get used to on Nutrist. She has a lot more burst than the Ultras, but it's different. But if you, if you get the East decks on there, you should expect it and just jump in there and kill them. She's pretty scary. And goodbye to Rengar. The only thing I don't like out of Rengar is if you watch Dandy or Professional Rengar or just a high level solo queue Rengar, especially before full damage Rengar came out, really realizing counter ganking. Um, do you want to ward out the other guy's jungle to some extent to counter gank or have wards so you don't get counter ganked if you're ganking? And tier one warding totem and not ever buying green wards is not how you do that. 
Just work on the vision. Rough, rough. Which one? Ooh. And Skrexa Skrexa is death. definitely affecting the early game here. Yeah. Hey, it's doing a good job. Volcano Techie. When I first started listening, that guy wrote in a lot. Cheer should remember that. Oh, yeah. And Rek'Sai is giving Cassiopeia blue. That's really good. See, I don't know. I think Victor should be able to kill Cassia right now. But we'll see. I mean... Oh, that was so close. Alright, maybe not. If that E hit. That maybe. laser almost tickled Cass. And Thresh, um, I like Moby Boots and support. We talk about the support core three items quite a bit. When you're losing lane this hard, you need combat stats to fight a 2v2, especially against Leona. When you're playing a melee support and you become a target to Leona lane, you just lost the lane really hard. Because now, like, Leona has two targets and she can just <laughs> exhaust 80 All right. Uh, this is heads up to Sport because he just said he he's having the same uh, bug issue oh, that yeah. I was having yesterday uh, when I was playing Elise. Is basically it gets stuck as a cursor. Uh, the way I was solving that issue is you have to use like a targeted cast ability on somebody else. Mm -hmm. It can stick that way until you do it. So I thought that was just an Elise oh, issue. Oh, right, but... Bola. What the hell? All right, so if he used Bola there, that was a 100% kill. Um, he went 5.Q for no reason. Use Bola, please. Sometimes I can break the prey down a little bit more, but that's kind of just one of those you need to get used to using E if you're going to play Rengar. If you don't I see a lot of people not using E. Like, they d hate on that 5-point E. Uh, that's probably where I'm not saying that's the appropriate thing to do because it's not, but yeah, no, it's not. If you want to play Rengar that way, um, there's another champion called Master Yi that may be more damage. He does the alley. exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, if you want, if you want all damage, take a no champion that does all damage. This is kind of what I was worried about. One, Cassio getting the blue, and two, Cassio coming up for this yeah. gank. She was in range of Victor. E R Victor's kind of like old Annie. He has ranges where you can't be in lane with a certain amount of health, otherwise they will one shot you. And mm -hmm. Cassio walked within range to Victor. Cassio had a potential to outplay there. Um, she should have known that she's in range, so her two plays were either back off or try and flash the E. Oh shit. There you go, there's the ward in the bush. Oh, it's not gonna matter though. Good point. Okay, that was a pretty good one if you want to get a lot of champions. I think it's funny because Kale finally got a fight to go her way when there weren't minions around. Use bowl and secure that booty, unless you're found. I actually think the best way to play E right now is a bruiser E. Like one or two offensive items, Randuin, Tex Drinker. But Not e? tanky, but Bruiser E. At Mastery E? Yeah. Um, it's not what, I feel like Pwn was advocating the idea not too long ago, but. Huh. Yeah. Don't mail too. Uh, you just dive the back line and do I don't damage. listen. I don't listen to Adam because if it hasn't been in meta for at least three patches, it isn't correct in Adam's mind. Well, technically, Adam can just call everything. If 10% of it happens, he can say, I told you so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a faker build. Yeah, I've, I've been playing top and mid Yi. He's been one of my favorite champions for a long time. And when I'm having fun on my Smurf, I play it top, mid, and jungle. I've done it for two or three seasons, so it isn't just Faker. But I found more success with one or two damage items into random ones than anything else. Or especially QSS. I love QSS on E. It's magic resistant. Let's see, deal with one crack control, which is often enough. 
Good TP. Yeah, it was. And you can see Spork. I wasn't a big fan of the first TP earlier, but um, that TP one kind of made up for it. Top. Yeah, that's good. Good TPs. I'd like to see Rek'Sai tunnel at entrances harder here. When you know you're playing against a Rengar and uh, well, just any top laner because they all have TP right now. Kind of a game you want to look to be just ganking, but you also want to be able to react when you need to react. And if you mm -hmm. don't play Rek'Sai with tunnels on the map, like you, you lose a lot of options. The laning phase in this game is going on a lot longer than the previous one. Mm -hmm. We've got Warrior. All right, this is like a standard Rengar build from like a year ago. Not this bad, is... though. Oh. Alright, that is why you jump in with Bola. Or I don't think he should have jumped in at all, but... I, I, especially if he was going to jump in, he probably shouldn't have jumped in on Rek'Sai. Yeah. I feel like I'm entering a time capsule, though. He's 5-point queuing, he's, he's using the old Rengar build. He's playing Rengar like a, a time traveler. Oh well. And just don't jump in there. Um, not only was it bad because you got one shot... But you need to hit tab and look at one, items, and two, what champions you're playing against. You're playing against Kale, and you haven't seen her ult recently, and you can't one-shot them. Like, also, it that's it was a 2v3. Regardless yeah. if two of them There's were the, down a quarter of their health, it's still a 2v3. Mm -hmm. And they have way more abilities than you're going to be able to get off your double Q if you were going to do it. Yes. That they can turn that around way, way harder than you can. Lucian's got a 4 2 and 1. One too many assists. But pretty good score line outside. That. I don't like this play. I just don't think their wards are deep enough to make it. Yeah. So, like. You want to have a reason you're doing everything. So it's Tristana Dush there. What's your reason for staying in lane here? You got lane into tower, so you're denying the wave from Lucian. That's good. Um, what do you do after you get lane into tower? You're no longer denying it from Lucian. You can't kill tower. You can't kill Leona. You're just, I don't know, trying to make yourself look like attractive bait. And good kill by Rex and Rengar. Rengar is clear, sustain is bad, so it works in. You Trailblazer on Rengar, one, it lets you farm harder, and um, it basically just lets you farm harder and helps with sustain. You don't need skirmishers or slow, because when you jump in, you're usually jumping in a 5 point bola, and like they're not going to try and 1v1 you when you ult them, unless you're stupid enough to ult the jacks, which you shouldn't be doing on Rengar anyway. If the target can kill you, you don't ult them. And, um, you're not going to stalkers them when they're in 5 point bola. So it's just. There's not anything else to buy. Hmm. And Silent gets out here. Oh man. He wants the. Oh, there it is. <laughs> And uh, also, somebody else said use um, Power W for sustain in jungle. You don't see a lot of people do this. Um, the one exception is if the camp is about ready to die, then it's okay. Then it's effective health. Yeah, it's effective health. And time is money in the jungle. Sometimes it's better to be on low, on low health and just have a faster clear. And empowered Q is faster. It's usually more effective health because you're taking less damage from the camp. It dies faster. And it's just... A lot of reasons for it to be better. But, like, let's say you're doing a race and you killed the big one and all the small ones are at, like, 10%, which isn't something you do in Rengar anyway. But for the sake of the example, then you would use Empowered W. But usually you don't. And then I would probably just kill a small race so I had 5 points in, and I could sit on it. But that's me. You want to be ready for the action, and you don't want a fight to break out and be, like, 
crap, I have two points on my ult, guys. I can't fight right now, so sometimes you just want to sit on five points a lot. Good flash by Victor. Versus Squishy, he's building a chain vest. I don't really know what chain vest builds into on support. It looks like he's going Thorn Mail. Um, Thorn Mail, one, it's not an incredibly effective support item. Two, he doesn't have a lot of effective health. He doesn't. I don't know. I would just, like, <laughs> be rushing face here. He or sold his. Or... He sold his gold item. Yeah, he did. Yeah. There's almost no reason to do that. Unless you're, I guess, at six items, maybe? He actually viable pre six lanes to gank top mid, but he fell way far. But he actually got a good gank off top lane, pre six Harox. I think his mid game has been a bigger issue than anything. Black Cleaver and Rengar. I don't like Black Cleaver unless you're going tanky Rengar. And Black Cleaver Warrior is one of my least favorite buys in the jungle, anyway. It's... I don't know. Either go damaged or go tanky. But Cleaver is usually something you get with Cinder Hulk, though. You want to be able to stick in the fight. And when you ult someone on Rengar, you E combo, so you have one stack when you land on them, because your E combo already landed on them. Um, another stack, another stack. And it kind of takes a while to actually get used to the Black Cleaver. Mm. Last Whisper is usually better. I would like to see him just build damage or random ones, though. Or Spirit Visage, he's playing double AP. But. Most of the lanes from blue team are doing pretty well. I like Rick's size build. And maybe lock it, but overall the build is pretty good. And like I talked about, um, Victor one shot range. But he may die for it. E combo, please. Rengar should have lapped on Kale. Yeah, he should have. The TP is a little. Oh, no. Huh? A little Leona, bit. Leona was pretty free. They might have been able to actually get both Kale and Leo if he would have gone for mm -hmm. Kale. Because Leona's not going to be the difference maker with 3v2 in that situation. Yeah. RIP sport. Nice. Oh, they need, they need to switch focus. Yeah, Rank, yeah, Rex and Kale had the right idea there. Good bit just, just want to get out. The Spork overextend a little bit. I've actually seen this in a few Sporks games. Uh, I saw us playing a few as well. Really want to respect um, showing the vision for red team here on stream. You don't have wards on this side of river, you don't have wards on this side of river here or here. I mean, this is pretty naked, all things considered. And you're very far up mid in an aggressive position against a team that has speed up and pick potential on Leona. Um, on the other side of the coin, blue team's vision, a little bit better, not great. I'd like to see either team, dragons up in a minute, so wards in that general area here. But Leona's doing a good job sweeping out. She's got her face. I'm not really understanding the thorn mail. No. He may be a I mean, newer player, I think. Uh, yeah. But I mean, the thing is that Kale basically cancels AP, so red blue team is basically a double AP comp, even though they do have a Rexa that's affecting the early game, but mm -hmm. Well yeah. Um as long as everybody else isn't a first timer, um we'll get you into next game well. But yeah. if they're all first timers, I can't promise anything. But I'll say um there's a very good chance you'll be able to get into next game. We're tonight, since we have the new sign up sheet, we're doing preference to people who've never played a BA before. And people who are in their first game, but I'll I'll watch sign up sheet a little bit more because I think you probably should have been in this game. Stood a chance played in last one, and Arrow plays BA a lot. So sport, same thing. He's very far up in mid. Um, look at vision again. Not a lot of it. Same, same mistake. This is kind of, if you are somebody who wants to watch your replays to improve, one of the things I do is I do a notepad and I write it down. If I do the same mistake again, I put an X next to it. Um, for sport, 
the overextending mid is something I would definitely be putting an X next to a lot. Vision, vision, vision. Good clean. Rengar finally got then. somebody nice. Hey. Might want to use kill a little, a little bit earlier on a higher priority target. Yeah, it's Rengar. I wouldn't have jumped back in. I know you got to kill on Leona, but your team is going to get that kill anyway. It's not worth risking it. But awesome to see. Um, team was behind and they picked a good fight. Yeah. So generally they good. got him in a solid spot. One of the reasons they could make that play is neither team really had a ton of vision around the dragon area or just a ton of vision in general. And blue team didn't have anything deeper than this bush right here, the old banana bush, and they couldn't see reinforcements or the flank that did eventually come. I feel like if people have used the sign-up sheet within the last hour, I feel like they might have signed up for next week, because I'm not seeing an update really with new names. Just a heads up. We'll see. Yeah. TLT we'll try to keep track. Um, uh, we'll do our best to get you into third game. He just messaged me, but... Um, same thing, sign-ups, first-timers, get priority. We just want a system that's fair and um, yeah. transparent so everybody gets treated the same and I can't give anyone special treatment just because they messaged me. So we'll go through the normal protocol once the time does come after this game ends. What did they say to you in kindergarten? Uh-oh, the JavaScript take, is broken. Take your turn, wait your turn. That doesn't seem right. And Cassiope is starting at some poison stacks here. She's got 361 and she's got Shouldn't be. two of the core items on Cass. What I really don't like here is I talked about the standard build for Cassio. It's usually tier into Abyssal. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Double AP against double AP, it's probably always going to be tier into Abyssal. Helps shred for your teammate, Kale, and it helps deal with the rise and the thrash. Ah, uh, not Rise and Thresh, the Rise and Victor. Thresh. Yes. Bomb for the dog. Yeah. Because that Thresh making moves. <laughs> Honestly, if Rengar had just stuck through that, he probably could have had that regardless. Alright, we'll go back to full vision. That was close. Blue team. Alright, if you're going to cheese a bush. In the mid game, you probably don't want to cheese it with two people. They may get out of it though, because red team didn't focus it out Lucian quickly enough. But good one, better. You're too good for the sign up sheet. Okay, yeah, it updated. All right. I don't okay. think it's broken. No, it just may take a minute. I know it uses the right API, and the right API only updates every certain amount of time. So, could be something to do with that. Yeah, I just checked it. That's uh, why OPGG has so. a refresh limit. Yeah. Get double kill by Trist. Um, both Ooh. teams are kind of wandering back and forth and throwing here. Really want to make a call with four or five teammates. Cheesing out a bush with two people isn't good. Um, walking through the jungle into that cheese bush with three people isn't good. There's a lot both teams could be doing to improve on here. But just... Um, for starters, try and do stuff in numbers and try and do stuff on wards. And you'll get into a solo key game where your teammates don't want to do what you want to do. Generally, it's better to do stuff as a group, even if it's a crappy call. So sometimes you just have to be a sheep and suck it up. Wow. LCS big Whoa. flash from Rek'Sai. Nice flash from Rek'Sai. Sick play. <laughs> In the monster. <laughs> that was a really nice turn on of aggression. Mm hmm. <laughs> so I don't we think can... he, Jacket needs a ban. I think no. uh, I'll have a talk to him after this about the ASCII. <laughs> so, both teams, Dragon's coming up in a minute. Um, as with Blast Dragon, I'd like to see the vision on Dragon improve a little bit. Um, good to see some pink wards out of red team. But just generally make some plays around Dragon and make plays in numbers. 
Rengar shouldn't be roaming the map alone, unless he's really fed and trying to yellow people. And Rengar, item choice here, I would have liked to see randomins. Um, I know you're playing double AP, and I talked about randomins after Warrior, but we'll just assume you bought Black Cleaver. Um, good against the Fed Lucian, gives some health for Cassiopeia, good against the Rek'Sai, and also good against Kale. for Kale because yeah, she auto-attacks. It, it slows that auto-attack down significantly, and she's doing less AoE because of it. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to take into account when you're playing games against someone like Kale or Diana, mm -hmm. or AP mages to auto-attack. They still auto-attack. It's just... Both teams should be grouping more, though. This is kind of rough. And Lucian really wants to get a Scrying Orb here. I... Uh, C80 carries build Scrying because they're trying to copy LCS. And I still think it's good to buy Scrying because it's really good to have one person in your team with it. But you really, really, really need to remember to use it. If someone on your team face checks and you're near them and they die and your Scrying Orb is still up... It's their fault for face checking, but it's your fault for not scrying as well. That's kind of one of the things you buy it for. And it sucks, your teammate might be an idiot, but... Gotta help him out. Hey, horse, gummy worms versus Sour Patch Kids. I like Sour Patch Kids more. I like Sour Patch Kids, but the gummy worm bag was cheaper than the Sour Patch Kid bag. <laughs> Ice that was the deciding factor. I used to do gummy bears. Just in high like school. Those have flavored good. vodkas, you know, probably better tasting than Everclear, but Everclear is cheaper, so. And it gets you more drunk. Yeah, it's an economical well, decision. Well, the, the thing was, if I was going to buy Sour Patch Kids, I was going to buy the $7 two pound bag. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing that, I figured not spend $7 on straight cancer. And I'll get a smaller bag for a buck thirty. I can't believe Red Forty is still legal. Like it kind of blows my mind. <laughs> Some stuff there isn't like science to back it. Like there isn't a lot of science to back aspartame actually being bad. There's a lot of science to back Red Forty being really bad, and it's illegal in Europe for a reason. But I guess it's okay to have in our food. That's what I think whenever I eat red food. How bad Red Forty is. Just kind of getting caught here. It's not the best. And same thing. They're traveling as three. Not good. Just Victor, Rengar, trying to be there. Oh, God. Oh, man. So, not leading with Bola, one. Jumping on Leona, two. Jumping into three v or one v five. Pretty much because your teammates aren't there, four. Like, that play was bad for a lot of reasons. There's been, like... There's been a lot of like attempted forced plays out of red, and the only time it's worked was right near that blue bush where they actually closed the gold Ooh, gap. Oh, nice! Old oh. mm -hmm. horse. Have you tried watermelon sour patch kids? I have. They're better after you've had them for a bit, but um, I don't know. I I went back to the regular ones after a while. I haven't had sour patch in a while though. I've cleaned up my diet a lot in the last year or two. Oh, that was never that bad. You're eating uh, clean, baby. Yeah, Senpai, uh, could you explain why Thornmail is a good buy? Um, we talked about Thornmail a little bit. Um, I don't think it's a good buy. So, this should have effective health, or just more effective items in general. I would have liked to see Face Rush or Locket Rush. But Thornmail's not an effective buy. I think Karkov. It was something in main called Orloff. A locket rush would have been amazing. Yeah, gosh, this game for the team. Orloff is good though. It's like Vlad for anybody who's down south. Vlad's disgusting. Those Orloff. So Rengar, uh, his max is fine. I'm just looking at skill match skill maxes. I guess they're all 17, 18 for the most part, so it's hard to tell. And, um, chat makes a good point. Um, we see another team buying Righteous Core and you're really far behind. 
it's okay if your win condition is still to get picks, but Thresh just really, we talked about Righteous Glory having less effective defensive stats than other items. Um, when you have 10 deaths, look for effective defensive stats, and you're also playing support against double AP and your team doesn't have lock it, so that's kind of, I don't know, it's really, if you're playing against an AP mid and AP top, and nobody in your team has lock it, that's just like, a huge standout issue to me. It's like everybody it's in your just team a, is taking ten percent more damage. That's crazy if you think about yeah. it. It's a bunch of less damage, and then if they do decide to front load with like, it, you basically negate one of Cassiopeia's abilities if you're able to get your shield up on mm -hmm. multiple people. Oh, if Silent had it canceled like two autos there, he might have been able to come out ahead. Alright, uh, i got another question. Is Banner Command a good substitute for Locket? So, oh. don't want to get into this discussion a ton. I was going to say, these, those are fighting words to Horus. <laughs> if someone in your team already has a Locket, you want a second Aegis item, you don't need Mikhail's, or already have Mikhail's, oh, Rengar. and you don't have anything else to buy, Locket's not bad. And you can use the stats. A good jump reset for Triss. Mm -hmm. But um, generally, banner is not something I would buy. No. Very conditional. <laughs> I just it. A lot of people say like you build a lot. This is something Baba and I have to say to people a lot, but they don't feel like listening. Um, you buy a locket because of the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh, because the minion's immune to magic damage? If you ever play against somebody who built a locket for an AP champion, or you want another reason not to build it, let's say this cannon minion has the thing on it and Rengar only does magic damage, you just kill the wave around the bannered minion, and your next wave kills it. It's, I don't know. Even if you deal magic damage, you just kill the wave around it. I'm and it's kind gonna... Of Chris, what do you think of ketogenic diet? I think it's really dangerous, and you shouldn't do it without talking to your doctor. <laughs> your doctor will probably not to tell you to do ketosis either. I've had to treat... Not treat, but I've, had to, I've seen quite a few cows who've struggled with ketosis, and people do as well. So, I, I wouldn't try it. It's kind of the science that Atkins is founded on, though. But a little, a little different because you won't actually start breathing ketogens. And this Atkins. game is back and forth. I've been on keto for five years. No, you haven't. <laughs> it's really dangerous to be on keto for more than four or five days. So, Vic, uh, Tris. QS this a little early, especially with Leona coming. And Dash with the Thorn Man. Fork is going GA and Rise too, which I'm not a huge fan of. Unless he's sitting on these items, he could just be sitting for Abyssal. But... Look, they got 5th Dragon, so... Warding around That should dragon. be a wrap. But both teams didn't do a great job of it, but... Um, blue team took more advantage of the bad warding. The biggest thing for the winning team here, and we don't focus on the winning team a ton sometimes, so I'll make this note. Didn't see any of you buy elixirs. I might have missed it, but if you're five dragons, you should be buying elixir. Kale bought elixirs early to try and swing some of the 1v1s between her and Ryze, but. It's not bad. Uh, I, I just. I feel like Red Team tried to force way too many things that they had no business trying to force either. That was a major issue. Uh, and we'll get the next lobby. So, if you've already Let me played, get started. Yeah, just get things going fast. All right. I don't want to kill myself with BA tonight. I have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna use a weird password just so that we can really control it because I think we'll have more than enough people to add. Yep. And if you've already played, um, please let new people get in this game. And priority goes zero games over one game over two games. So respect that rule set, and we'll make sure just. Make sure Whale gets in because he isn't played. 
Frown power. If they're in, help frown power get in. Make sure whale and frown. Battle Arena, what else do you have in here? Alright. Gotta go through the list. And if you do want to play in Battle Arena, we also, every week, 7pm Eastern Time, so this is our last game, and um, remember the sign-up sheet is on the website, made reference for it, just go to trinityforcenetwork.com, click the Battle Arena tab, and check the sheet. I'm gonna do a pretty quick rundown of everyone, just so we can get in the next game. Um, well, in one second. Cassiopeia, um, played pretty well, um, respect how much health you can be in line with against Victor, and you should be really, really looking for the tier into Abyssal build, one, against Victor's burst, two, double AP versus double AP, it's pretty hard not to run that, um, I didn't see a lot that you did wrong outside of that, but Cassiopeia is very hard, so I'm sure that, like, you probably just could have been more effective with ultimate and keeping poison up in general. But don't extend in lane as hard as he did when um, you don't have flash and or you're else, playing against Rengar. Who else needed to be invited there at the end? Whale and Frown are the only two I saw. Okay. And anybody else who hasn't played, um, hop in the T4 chat room right here. Let Ugly Tuco know that you haven't played before. And he'll make sure that you get in. Or just say something in stream chat, and we'll make sure you get in as well. And also, I'm out. Because Adam told me to show up for a game, and I did. So I love you guys. Alright. Grab, grab me whenever. Say goodbye to Chira. Bye, guys. Love you. You're the greatest. See See you. Okay. Bye. User disconnected from your channel. Alright. So, Leona, um, 2v2 lane early. Be really careful taking extended trains against a Thresh lane when he has disengaged spells up. Kind of the same thing I talked about in the Nautilus game. If you get something really free where you can use your stun into E, take it. Don't force it unless you can land it on Trist your junglers there. The Thresh can really, really outplay you in those trades, and you need to be more cautious of that, although it didn't happen a ton. Um, focus your CC on priority targets more in the mid game as well. I just saw some random stuff where you randomly cheesing a bush with Lucian. There's a lot of weird things I'd prefer not to see. Um, Rx side did pretty well. I would like to see a lot more tunnels on lane early game. Um, he kind of gave up some pressure. He got bailed out. But um, just I, I think that was the biggest thing I would have liked to see. But I think generally he did pretty well outside of that. Could have been a little more warding into Rengar's jungle. We talked about warding out Rengar's jungle as opposed to defensive warding against Rengar last game. Um, you kind of want to see where he starts ult, but it, same thing against Evelyn. You ward Evelyn's camps. You don't ward your jungle against Evelyn. But outside of that, you did, did good job, dude. Um, Lucian, same thing. Cheesing, bot lane bushes, and um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing I saw. Just laning. Same, Lucian, Leona, same thing. Cheesing bushes, and Understand the reactive trades and landing. I think Trist could have burned you and killed you guys a couple times, but she was underestimating how much burst Tristana has. But also upgrade Skyrim Totem. Kale, really, really, really need to work on CS. I talked about in the game around 12, 10 minutes, the most effective way to CS on Kale if you really, really don't know how. Cast is first, then melees with E up. Um, Kale rune page helps some too, and just. If you start flask, use flask as a win condition. Burn through flask, push to tower, um, force them to TP back, recall while your wave is a tower and take TP advantage. That's how you use flask for win condition. Um, you don't use flash to kill, but flask, flask, flask. But um, outside of that in CS, generally played well towards mid to late game. Victor. Respect when you don't have flash. Same thing as Spork. You, re you guys really, really overextended on the map hard. Um, move your wards forward if you want to overextend that much. Really look to bully out Cassiope P harder with ease early. Um, the Dota Drill and my CS guide is good for that. And I mentioned that I, it's generally good for almost every person in lane. Victor's really, really big though because if you just hit ease, it's kind of hard to lose lane. So... 
rise. Ulrich's feeling with that ward's mid. I've seen, I saw that in the rise game, and I saw it in the Fiora game. It kind of seems to be a continuing trend to me. Continuing trends are one of the hardest things to get rid of because they're happening over and over again for a reason. And there's probably... I would say the biggest thing is if you want to pick and engage, make sure you're looking at the mini-map first. It's um definitely something you can be corrected easily, but it's something that probably should be corrected. Wow. All right. What was that? Um, somebody <laughs> shot off a firework a couple of doors away. Nice. Um, outside of that, I think Lane, you, and Kale just had really poor CS. So, Thresh, we talked about the Thornrail build. Um, and Glory, when you're behind, is pretty rough. If you're gonna play Thresh, you just really, really need to work on lantern usage. So, yeah, if if you play Thresh, just practice standing away from the target and then you get a lantern. If you don't get lanterns off on Thresh. He's not a great champ to play. Um, and chat, Kale is best to use a preemptive shield and reactive. It can be really good preemptive. It's harder to use preemptive. If you're not confident with using it preemptively, you can hold on to it a little bit longer. And sometimes if you hold on to it a little bit longer, you can bait longer too. So It's better to use preemptive in a perfect world where you can like know 100% like how much damage is going to come in and you can like use it perfectly and you're down in one KL main. But if you're not confident in that, just um I generally earlier sooner is better than later, but don't not too too soon. But don't hold it as well. He is making a good point in chat. Rengar, the build is pretty rough. Look at the Rengar build from last game if you want to go into tanky Rengar build. Warrior into Black Cleaver is not good. You get Warrior over Cinder Hulk for the early in power spike. And you give up that power skype a lot when you go black cleaver second. Um, randomins is good and just yeah, just warrior into randomins or warrior into damage. And spirit visage is good on Rengar. Um, the war mogs rush was kind of awkward to me. I should really be long, looking to counter gank on Rengar a lot more. And you need to be using uh, Bola. This isn't 2013 Rengar. Rengar in his current iteration lives or dies by Bola. So if you're not jumping with Bola, it's not good. And don't jump into 1v4s and 1v5s. Um, Tristana. Uh, of course, what do you think about Kim Kardashian having a boy? Uh, it's great. I like Kanye, so I'm <laughs> glad that Kanye's going to have a son. I hope Kanye releases a new album soon. I'm a little more worried about that. But I'm selfish. Um, Vision Wards purchase. Lucian didn't buy one. Rengar didn't buy one. Just didn't buy one. 3-4-3-3. Three, 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 much better than last game. Um, Stealth Wards purchased. Cassiopeia didn't buy one. Um, and Lucian didn't buy one. Kind of normal for an AD carry. And only one Stealth Ward purchased by this team. It means outside of Trinkets and Panks, they only bought one ward before level 9. Which is horrendous and probably one of the reasons they lost this game. But good job by Rek'Sai. Um, good job. I don't know why Leona got one, but good job by Leona getting one. And good job by Kale getting two. Um, this is the line that tells me how well did you ward before level 9. So if this line is crap, you're warding before level 9 is probably crap. Um, wards destroyed. Pretty good out of both teams. Um, jungles, both teams make a point of smiting raptors more. So, we'll see, and we'll hop into game three. Oh. Well, I can't stop Are your that dogs going to be okay? Yeah, my dog's fine. I'm worried about stream chat. Oh, what's the password? Uh, I sent it to you over TeamSpeak. Okay. He forced with the number one at the end. Uh oh. I know, sneaky. <laughs> All right, um, got some new names in here. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, we got some new ones. Make and, sure this uh, looks fair. Yeah. Three of the people who I invited who were new, they didn't accept, so. All right, oh, well. um, I'm going to have one person switch. Can we have... Snump and Beaver. All 
And just trying to make the teams even, give you guys the best game possible. Alright, so it looks like I missed Tristana there to answer Wales Kim Kardashian question. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to handle a lot of things at once every day, as well as getting a more rank and solo queue. But Tristana, that game, um, understanding how much damage Tristana does, there are a lot of times where you could have jumped on them and just comboed them with E and then got away with like 10 or 20%. Just Tristana is a reset AD carry, and if you don't use her reset, she can be slightly less effective. Landing phase was hard, but um, I don't know. I just think there were fights where she could reset off people and she didn't. So, and after the E buff, you can get a pretty clean E between autos. So you can like lead with first auto E, auto, 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 W, or, or there are a couple of combos like that. And those are kind of what you want to be looking for on Tristana, especially with the range advantage that she offers. But, uh, I think that's what I saw, but, hmm. I didn't see a lot of us. I honestly think that Shisana was put in a difficult position because her lane didn't win and she wasn't getting lanterns and just as a hard AD carry to fall behind on. So maybe just if your team's losing really bad and you see other people falling behind on Tristana, understand how much burst you have and maybe try and make those plays. All right, we're going to go offline for about 20 seconds. We'll see you guys then. I'm just cutting the stream for YouTube. So hang out and stream chat. Right. If you have questions, I'll answer them when I'm back. Or you can talk about whatever the hell you guys are talking about.